Hello everyone, AL Levy here with Nail the Mix, and I'm going to unbox Air Apparent by Opeth, which is going to be mixed by the one and only Jens Bogren on Nail the Mix, June 2018. And this is one of the pinnacle tracks, I think, in progressive extreme metal production, so I'm super excited. Let me just show you guys that there are zero plugins on this there you go there's some basic balancing happening just because it's a big session and uh it needed it a little bit but i will just let you hear what we are starting with so here goes i'll play through a few sections because it's a long song Okay, so you can already hear that these tracks sound great, and if you know Opeth, uh, you're probably very excited right now. So let's uh, start with these drums. So looks like we've got a pretty standard setup. Kick, snare, five toms, ride hat, two chinas, two overheads, and some rooms here. And Jens was cool enough to include the samples that he used. So we've got a natural kick, which I'll let you hear. And then the kick sample. And you can hear that the sample is not completely replacing that kick, it's just augmenting it. And once again, this is what's known as sample reinforcement, not sample replacement. And we've got a natural snare, top and bottom, as well as uh, the sample, high and low. Let's uh, hear what we're working with here. Very nice. I'm going to turn on the overheads just to give you a better picture. So, as you can hear, the, uh, in addition to just being metal, uh, there are a lot of dynamics you're going to need to preserve in this performance. Um, I'm going to actually just solo the, the overheads. That'll give you a better idea. But uh, in this song, it goes through many, many different sections because, as um, you may know, Opeth goes from heavy to soft, heavy to soft a whole lot. And in their lighter sections, there's all kinds of ghost notes and just dynamic playing. And you're going to need to preserve that. So I would not just revert to your metal tactics of getting everything to be super even the whole way through. You, if you want this to not sound stupid, you're going to need to preserve these dynamics. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Okay, so you're going to need to have that sound great, but right next to sections like this, which are just metal as it gets. God, those drums are cool. Uh, but I, what I'm getting at is this is not going to be a one-size-fits-all-set-and-forget kind of mix you're going to have to nail different types of uh, approaches for different types of parts. And this song has plenty of different types of parts. All right, so play another one of these dynamic sections here. All right, let's take a look at these toms. So got five toms and 
looks like they have not been gated or cut, which might intimidate some of you guys because, well, it's a long song and a lot of Tom hits, but this is great practice. And what is really good about this is that it's really, really well mic'd, so it's very, very easy to tell when you've got Tom hits, so, you know, there should be no problem. Let's listen to what they sound like on their own. Very nice. That, that is yours to mess up. And we've got ride and hats. Um, up to you if you want to cut those out in the middle. There is a, you know, when we listen to that, that intense metal part, it sounded like there was a lot of ride happening there. Um, yep, there you go. Okay, uh, here's a here's a trick that I learned once. Um, okay, it's not as apparent in the 18. It's in the 16. But uh, sometimes if you're not 100% stoked on the sound of the close mic on the ride, you should look around other drum mics to, to see if you have something that can augment the sound. Usually it's going to be one of the floor toms because they are situated so close to the ride. And uh, here we've got the, uh, yeah, the 16. I bet you that if you combine that with the close mic, you know, once it's panned, of course, um, looks like it's not panned, you can get a good ride sound out of that. Um, and it seems to me like these are panned audience perspective. I, I'm just kind of guessing with these pannings, so I'm going to actually listen to these fills again now that I've... Uh, Hand them some. Nice. Okay. Let's hear these overheads. The ride actually sounds great in the overhead, so you're going to be able to get a lot out of that and silver heads sound very very nice. Let's hear these rooms. I don't know what grunge left and right are. I mean they're definitely room mics but uh, I guess we're gonna find out what actual mics they were during this nail the mix session. Oh nice so you know if you saturate that properly and blend that properly. That's probably going to add some nice aggression and glue to the kit. Let's hear the ambient mic. Nice, and the PZM. So you got a lot of options here. And one thing I want to remind you guys is that just because there's options with room mics doesn't mean you have to use them all. Uh, one of the frequent things that comes up with some of these nail the mix sessions is people don't know what to do with all the room mics they get. And I just want you guys to know that oftentimes uh, producers will throw up room mics because they can and because they're experimenting and because there's the channels available. And sometimes some of these room mics will be great for certain parts. Like I said, this is a very dynamic song. So maybe one of these room mics will sound great over one of the dynamic sections, but you might not want it over one of the metal parts. And that's for you to decide as a mixer. But just remember, you don't have to use them all of the time or even at all. It is totally up to you. All right, let's check out what we've got bass-wise. So it looks like, looks like we've got a uh, bass bomb. I'm guessing that that's a sub drop. Let's see here. Yeah, something like that. Uh, bass mic, bass DI, 
and whatever this bass 2 is. So let's just check out what the bass mic sounds like. It's a beta 52. Nice, so that's all. That's a bass amp, clearly. It's already got a little bit of distortion on it. it actually sounds super tasty. And I'm sometimes on the fence about bass amps in metal. Um, sometimes I don't think the juice is always worth, worth the squeeze, but in this case, man, that sounds nice. And uh, let's hear what the DI sounds like. I actually like the bass amp better than the DI which is kind of rare. Now, um, one thing that must be said about this bass player and this track, this bass player is incredible, one of the best in metal, and he plays with his fingers, which is a dicey proposition at best, usually with metal players, because, you know, for metal, you need to be super consistent, um, and finger playing is not known for being ultimately consistent. That's why you get a lot of metal bass players playing with a pick so that they are consistent. So when you get someone who is this consistent with their fingers, it's definitely a cause for celebration, and it's just really rare. Let me give you an example of what I mean. That's, like, unheard of tight for a finger player especially. Let's hear that with drums and bass. I bet you that's gonna sound awesome. Yes. Well, one thing I wanna show you guys too, which is really, really not something you get very often is this is a true rhythm section and so on these dynamic parts you get real bass lines um and here's the perfect example and here's an, another example and uh i know this because i know the song I mean, I could just sit there and listen to that the whole time. It, the reason that I'm going on so long about bass is because sometimes in metal and rock, uh, you can take the approach of making the bass just be a low extension of the guitar, but it, that would be the wrong approach for this. The, the bass in this needs to stand out as its own instrument, as well as being a marriage between the guitar and the drums. So it's a true rhythm section with true uh, proper bass drum and bass guitar interaction. And so, you know, it's gonna be a, uh, a more traditional uh, type of approach you're gonna need to take for making that work. Uh, so good luck, it's gonna be fun. Let's listen to some of the guitars. Looks like we've got Two sets of rhythms, rhythm one and rhythm two, no DIs, which is fine. Um, you know, you're not always going to get a DI when you mix. Uh, let's hear what rhythms one sound like. <laughs> hear the difference rhythm two okay so clearly rhythm one is higher gain rhythm two is lower gain they're not the same thing and uh, got rhythm two a little quieter here um, you know rhythm two is there to add some clarity to rhythm one let's hear them together <laughs> Thank you. 
Now this is an example too of heaviness is in the hands. Uh, this band tunes in standard, I believe, uh, which is not something that you guys are uh, probably used to in metal. Uh, most bands tune down these days, but I mean this is in standard uh, with a traditional rhythm section. You know this is a lot closer to uh, classic rock and you know how I, I guess how the relationship between those core rock instruments were supposed to work. Let's hear just rhythms, bass, and drums. I'm going to play that metal part because it sounds awesome. And turn down the guitars a hair like I don't know, like a db or something so they're a little loud but uh, i'm actually going to go back to that part i said earlier that was just groove city between the bass and the drums and add the guitar in there so you can hear how the three uh i guess core instruments interact <laughs> So you can hear the ba the bass and the guitar are not playing the same thing. They're working in a complementary fashion, and that is just not common. This is part of why this band is so great. Uh, now, it would not be Opeth without a ton of leads also, so let's check out what we got here. Sounds so good. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna activate all of these leads. Love Evos, man. You got so much to work with on this song. I guarantee you that this solo is going to be incredible, too. I don't know how many of you guys are guitar players, but bending that high and in tune with that kind of vibrato is just next level skill. Um, let's see what these lead guitars are doing here. Okay, so some of you may be saying, wow, these tracks already sound so great to begin with. What is there to do? Well, one of the most important skills you need to develop as a mixer is the skill of learning how to balance things. Uh, these tracks are meticulously produced, and so you're not going to need to overcook them. Uh, and I highly suggest spending a majority of your time, at least at first, working on the balance because that's what's going to make this come to life because um, you've already got all the sounds you need already worked in in the production let's see and play some evos 
Can't go wrong with Evos. All right, that sounds unsettling. Let's see what else we got. Feel dub, feel left and right. It's faj noise. I'm not sure what that all means. So we're going to check it out. Yes. Oh, wow. This is cool stuff. Oh, that sounds like, like strings. Talk about cool arrangement. Wow, that, that's an epic moment. Let's check that out together. Okay, I need to say something. In addition to just being a hell of a track to mix, I highly suggest that all of you guys that are musicians and producers study this for arrangement reasons too. This is a masterclass on great production and arrangement. Um, the level of skill required to make it sound that great and that epic and to be interesting for eight minutes straight is uh, truly world class. And to be able to get into this track by track and truly analyze what goes into something like this, man, I would have killed for an opportunity like this when I was coming up. And I highly suggest that you guys try to get every ounce of knowledge you can out of this. Now, let's see. I'm guessing the ACK right here stands for acoustic. And I was right. So like there's strings that play over it as well. Let's see here. More acoustic. Okay, let me make another comment here, because uh, I'm just commenting away. Lots of times you hear metal players try to play acoustic, and it just sounds like garbage, um, just because they don't have the, I guess, the, the finger strength or the phrasing to really make it sound authentic. But just check out how great this acoustic playing sounds. Looks like there's a Rhodes going at the same time. Let's hear that. Ooh, that's tasty. Okay, I need to say another thing. Um, lots of times people will ask, what, what kind of what kind of synth library do you use, and how do you get such great sounds, and and how how do you get things that sound so epic? And I really do think that. If you look at this, this is the perfect example of what you do. You get great sounds from the source. That is just a phenomenal sounding Rhodes. And so when you have a sound like this, you don't need to do too much to make it work. It already sounds great from the get-go. Uh, that's what you need to do. Put the work in at the beginning. And let's hear what that Rhodes and that acoustic sound like together. I bet it's super cool.
right, so you guys already know that there's strings here. Let's do the piano. More great sounds. And looks like well, you guys already heard the slide guitar. We've got a ring modulator. Killer. And look at this. Flutes. And I uh, don't have money that these are real. You have a lot to dig into on this track. All right, let's hear these vocals. Okay, so it looks like we've got one main vocal here and a few uh, overdubs called vocal effects. Yeah, so we got a main vocal here. It's in, it's in. Yeah, all right. Great death metal voice. And uh, looks like Jen's included these effects, which are really cool too. And essential to to the song, I think. Like these aren't just there for by accident. Yeah, I, I mean, all right, let's listen to these vocals together. Uh, like I said, this is an arrangement and production masterclass, not just a mixing. Not, and this is not just a nail the mix, in my opinion. You should study this and learn from it. So many years to clean. Hell yes. So many years to clean the <laughs> like I said before, this is yours to screw up. And we got a megaphone. Let's see. The shield of death down in the levee of the ship. Yes. everyone please have fun with this this has been al levy with the mix and you're academy unboxing air apparent by opeth <laughs>